Hey guys, I'm traveling through Southern California and I wanted to give you some insights, perspective into uh, car camping in a Prius. Some Walmarts let you camp out in the parking lot. I've got a lot of friends that I've made, especially now through the website, who say, sure, you can park in my driveway. And a lot of them offer, yeah, sleep on the couch, go for it. But <laughs> what I found is sometimes their houses are sort of messy and maybe they have cats or dogs. I'm a little sensitive to cats, especially. And it just, it's not the same privacy that, that I was used to and just this sense of peace that I was looking for. So enough about that. I bought a, a Forerunner and it was, it was like a four cylinder, it, it had like a timing chain. And so I was really thinking like, this thing's bulletproof, it's awesome. And, and it can go anywhere, you know, if I'm, I'm driving and I get stuck in the snow or whatever, it can just go anywhere with this thing. But what I found is that the gas mileage wasn't super great and it just wasn't comfortable. There's a lot of bouncing in my neck and back, especially working at the computer, sitting a lot. I just, it just didn't work. So after a year of doing that, I'd saved up enough money that I bought a Prius. Now, not only does this reflect my values of sustainability and efficiency, but I mean, you just get awesome gas mileage, right? You don't have to stop as frequently at gas stations. I was constantly worried on these long trips. Like, there aren't a lot of gas stations in some of these places. And some of the ones I'd pass, I, you know, I would think to myself, do I really want to get gas there? You know, is that really the best place? And so I was struggling to, to balance those two things. With the Prius, I'm saving time. And yes, I could have got a Toyota Echo or a Yaris or any other car, but I, this car in particular has the hatchback. So it's, the seats fold down and there's enough space that you actually can car camp. I ended up finding a really good deal on this one used has a solar panel built into the top and so it runs the fans when I'm not in the car. And, and that's awesome because it does get hot. Right now it's a little cold. Um, you, again, you can see the snow and stuff. It's the middle of the day, it's like noon and it's decent out, but it, get, it was below freezing last night. And I could actually sleep in here and do all right because I have a couple sleeping bags, down comforter. And the really cool thing about a Prius is that you can just let the car run all night, run, right? It, the engine starts, it charges the battery, and then it stops. And then the battery runs basically air conditioning or your heater. And I've done that all night before and it used less than one gallon of gas. That's like three dollars. It's like a three dollar hotel right there if you've got a driveway to park in or you're just on BLM land like this. Be careful. Don't get stuck. This is a two wheel drive car and the tires, you know, they don't have super great tread or anything. They're not real deep. They're, they're meant to be really efficient. So they have high PSI. Uh, and as you can see, I got a bike rack here on the back that folds up and it actually stays pretty well within the, the airstream of the car. So I don't lose a lot of MPGs on that, but when I go review bikes, I can, I can put them on my car and drive around. Now you might notice this adopt sticker and you might've noticed Jack up here in the passenger seat before. That is not a real dog. Uh, that's just something I got cause I thought, hey, you know, it's kind of fun. It keeps me company a little bit. And if I'm parking somewhere at night and you know, someone sees the car, I feel like it might be a deterrent against break-ins or just messing around. A lot of people think it's real. And again, you know, it's like I've, I have dogs and it's just kind of company, a little bit of company. But if I need, I can take out just these few things. I can totally scoot the seat back and take a passenger with me. Same thing in the back. Right now, everything is, is laid down as low as it can be so that I can see out the back for safety. And I'm all about safety. This car does have a backup camera. Um, some of the trim on this one was, was upgraded. And again, I just happened to get a good deal on it used. I bought it in Texas. It's a darker color. It's a hybrid. And I think in Texas, there just isn't as much demand for this. So I got a good deal on it, you know, but again, I saved up cash. I could make an offer. You could buy a Prius like this. This is 2011. You could probably get one of these with higher miles on it uh, probably in the seven or $8,000 range. And there you go. That's like practically a home. And if you can save a thousand bucks a month on rent or something and just use a, a library um, or a Starbucks or a Panera Bread or something to do your work, this can save you a lot of money and it's really not that uncomfortable. So I was just super excited to share how I've set it up. So let's, let's jump back in here real quick. We've got this Wagon Tech uh, cooler and it actually has a built-in electric cooler. So it, it keeps the contents in here at a much lower temperature than the rest of the car. And it just runs off a nine volt, um, which I've got plugged in in that center console there. I can keep my yogurt. I've got some hummus, some of these microwavable Amy's meals. 
And because it opens at the top like this, when you open it, the cold air doesn't escape because hot air rises. So this is awesome. Um, I love this. Around it, I've got some granola and some stuff. I, I bought these, you know, husky liners down here because, you know, I'm, I'm on the sand and in dirty areas, sometimes it gets, it gets dirty. You can see the outside of the car. I like to keep the inside as clean as possible. Notice that I've got plenty of room here around this vent. This is to cool the, the, the hybrid batteries. So you don't want to cover that. So what I, what I end up doing when I'm actually uh, driving like this is I, I leave that down here, plug it in and it, it cools off. There's the on and off switches down here. It can actually heat stuff too. Uh, but then once I'm ready to, to do the bed setup, I'll grab one of these extra pillows over here like this lay it right there on top i've seen a bunch of people make these great hanging things and boards and i've even bought like a custom made cut out board with these stilts and stuff just that cooler plus a pillow is enough <laughs> you know it doesn't it sometimes it's like better to have simple flexible solutions than these over engineered like precision solutions and you save money that way too so i've got this folding like cot mattress next. So what I'm gonna do is fold it up. There we go, like that. And down. And I gotta just push it. A little hard to do with one hand. There we go, awesome. And then I've got this waterproof uh, mattress cover, like that. And then just a regular sheet. So you can see, you know, with, a, with two hands, I could get that figured out a little bit nicer. Got my sleeping bag right here, like that. Grab my pillow, put it right here, and then look at that. I mean, I, the other thing is I would take this out. So kind of pop this up. Now it's completely out of the way. And I've got my, my, nice, my nice sleeping bag here with good padding. And this one, it's not super wide. I think it's 25 inches, so it doesn't collide with the wheel well there on the left. And then I bought this. It's not a sleeping bag. It's just a blanket. I really like this thing. I'm trying to remember what it's called real quick here. This blanket is reversible, and a lot of times what I'll do is it gives me a little bit of extra warmth, but I use it to, to cover up my head because it's really lightweight, and I don't like wearing those masks because they just, when you roll around, they, they get bumped around. But I, a lot of times if you're in a Walmart parking lot or something, it's pretty bright. There's a light outside, which feels safe, but then you can't sleep as well. So this blanket, I'll just lay this over my eyes a little bit and kind of camouflage myself a little bit more like that. So I might look like this under the covers. This is actually the top of my standing desk and it is awesome. So I'm gonna show you that next. Here's the base. You'll notice that I've got it set up in such a way that if I get in a car accident, it's not gonna come flying through and decapitate me or knock me out or something. I put it down like this. Then I take this top part like this. And look at that, I can set this on any desk at like a friend's house or even at a library. And now I can use the kind of a stand up desk. And I much prefer that to sitting down. It just lets me relax my arms a little bit more. It's more ergonomic. I have a special platform that sits on it, a DJ stand basically. And I have my laptop and it's just, it's wonderful. I have room for my mouse, room for my keyboard. But again, when I'm driving, I keep it out of the way. I wanted to give you the full impression of what the standing desk looks like. So here it is completely set up. There's that DJ stand I was talking about. Got my laptop, ergonomic keyboard, adjustable height. This is really the key. And then just a kind of a standard cheap table from Walmart that, that goes completely flat. And most importantly, this little comfort stand here, because when you're standing for a long time, it can get you know your feet and your knees and stuff. Got a few things laying over there. It's just an Airbnb, you know, it's, it's really nice to be able to lay the, the foam mattress out a little bit. This is actually a fold out couch, but it's it's less comfortable because you kind of sink in, it's it's just uneven and stuff. And that's all the space I take, very clean, tidy, gives me a chance to do my laundry and most importantly, use high speed internet. So sometimes this is really the best way to do it. And then I'm not intruding too much on my friends. But you know, thanks again for all those people who have let me um, hang out a little bit. And here's a quick look at my food. Got that cereal again. Some nuts or berries, some fruits. Fruits are great. Quinoa, much healthier than rice, great protein. A little bit of uh, organic protein powder over here. And just some oranges and tortilla stuff in the fridge. Got the yogurt, a bunch of spinach. Celery is an awesome snack. Dip it in the hummus. And then I, I frequently make a big thing of beans 
and do uh, do almond milk, and then I'm able to make burritos and stuff like that without going out to fast food all the time. Another fun snack is just some healthy popcorn. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's how I keep it, you know, affordable but healthy. I don't want to gain a whole bunch of weight and be you know breaking out from eating greasy fast food. And I'm just not I'm not a fan of that model. So I know this is a bit off topic, but I think uh, I think eating and having foods that are more non-perishable, which tend to be more like vegetables and stuff. Um, it's just, it's good and it's important for when you're traveling and you're already exposing yourself maybe to not the best sleeping uh, pattern every night and things like that. Over here on the left, you can see I've got my, uh, just a basic you know, a suitcase, got some extra files, some extra shoes. And then down here, I have a whole bunch of just kind of safety gear. So here's a look in the extra storage Got a hat, don't wanna get skin cancer. Some of these reusable bags for sustainability. This is a fold out solar panel, which can charge phones and things like that. I got bottles, hats, raincoats. Um, I've even got like a kind of a jumper thing right here so that if my, my car battery dies when I'm far away from other people, I can do that. Some knee stuff, some extra cables, hiking poles, first aid, one of those hand crank lights, just a ton of stuff, bungee cords, extra long cables, jumper cables, pocket mask. If you need to do uh, CPR, goggles. This is from Burning Man a while back. And uh, umbrellas, and then and then this. Yeah, I've got an inverter here. And I'm actually wired in directly for my Prius battery over here. I might show that because it allows you to pull more watts um, and not mess up the circuitry on your car. Uh, so yeah, let's move to that. Okay, I got the cargo tray out and you can see my spare tire. Got some uh, big time duct tape. Uh, also some binoculars over here. Those could be useful. And then candle and mirror and you know just that survival camping stuff. Now this is what I think is really interesting. If we get this cover off, you can see the Prius battery. It's actually in the trunk instead of under the hood. And so that can be kind of confusing sometimes. Of course there's the big hybrid battery, but that's really separate. And the starter batteries is actually kind of small. Uh, so they, they go out, they seem to go out more frequently than on some other cars. In any case, um, under here you can see that I, I tapped into uh, the positive and negative prongs, and then I've run some of my own cable up here with the connection point. So I can actually connect to that with my solar panel and charge my, my car battery, or I can run uh, one of those inverters so I can get 120 uh, volts out and run a power tool or run my cooler or really just anything. Another choice accessory is this thing right here. That is a dash cam, and I've actually taped over the LEDs a little bit because I don't, I don't like them in my eyes. And I've, you know, kind of wired it in and run everything down. You can see, I've got the plugs all set up there, and then a bunch of plugs here. I really like that they've got several outlets on this car. Uh, anyway, this thing records. Uh, all the time and it just kind of loops and I can press this button to to mark sections and basically If there is an accident if something happens then I'll have video evidence and I'll be able to uh, Move through the court system better or defend myself in court and so it's uh, maybe worth thinking about There's a bunch of dash cam options. I've got one in the front one in the back also some security uh, Devices in the car. So I'll get like a text message if someone's messing with my car and just a regular alarm um, I don't have too many valuable things in here and I'm often close to my car or sleeping in it, <laughs> but it's it's just kind of nice to to have that that level of security if if you're treating this more like a home. I also have this nice little mat uh, that covers the, the dash so it won't crack over time and it's nice to just, you know, put stuff up here. Oh, and these, do you see these? These things um, really make it nice to put your arm down uh, on, the, on the door because this is actually kind of hard. Like there are parts of the car that are a little bit you know, maybe not quite as nice. And then I love this little holder here. I put my cell phone right there. I can still do everything. It stays out of the way, but I use that to navigate because I'm constantly relying on GPS when I travel and I can charge it and everything. If you're gonna camp, you might as well make this an awesome setup. And one of the ways that I've done this is I got this headrest holder. It's, it's very adjustable. It can swivel in and out. And I got my iPad there. So I can sit here or take a passenger. 
Um, I would probably put that away if I had a passenger though. And, and I, can, I can enjoy a movie. I can actually put my laptop there and look at the screen and just hang out here. Again, in a parking lot at my friend's house, I can catch up on stuff. I could even do email. It's a pretty nice setup and there is enough room down here. I've got my little goodie bag with some granola bars. Right now I have some extra bags and stuff. This isn't, isn't usually like this. And I, I got another um, bracket here that I, I can attach. I can actually lay down over here and then have my iPad right above me and just lay down and watch the screen uh, while I'm chilling, while I'm chilling out. And that that's really awesome. Another quick call out, I got a range extender because a lot of times I'll go to people's houses and I can plug that in and extend the range. Um, out to my car or into a spare bedroom or something. So I just wanted to call that out. This is this is like my little entertainment area. You really don't have to get a gigantic trailer or RV to enjoy yourself. And being able to have a gym membership like 24 hour fitness or whatever, I travel all over the country, I can shower, I can shave there, I can enjoy myself. I don't need to take that with me. I don't need to have a bathroom with me. And using this car means I can park in really any parking spot anywhere. I can go into parking garages. I don't have to worry about going through drive throughs and breaking something off. Even with a bike on the back, I'm not going to go into a garage and accidentally decapitate my car. Um, th those are all considerations that, that went into this purchase. Yes, you give some things up and yeah, you know, I've had to move a few things here to clear out that seat, but there's plenty of room there. The bed is almost completely open still. So it's very doable. Okay, so here I am in the car, <clears throat> kind of all the way in. Just wanted to give you some idea of what it looks like. Of course, the trunk's open, and they actually sell a really cool Prius tent thing that just sort of hangs down if it's hot out. Uh, of course, as I said before, it's been really cold lately, and so this is good for me. I know I can stretch. I'm 5'9". I'm I can get to the, the front seat if I need to. You know, if, if the car's running, I'm actually using it like a generator. Um, for heat or cool, but I usually don't do that. I usually just do fine with those extra blankets. I'm gonna go ahead and close the trunk now. It's got these nice handles. Reach up like this. There we go. And there it is again. You know, I've got shoes on and I'm still able to fit. As you can see here, it's pretty comfortable. I mean, you, you know, it's it's easy to hit your head and uh, bump it, but you got these handles to help you out when you're when you're getting ready to exit. Here's the door handle. Just pop it open like this. So a lot of times in the morning, I'll just kind of scan around, make sure that I'm not going to disrupt anyone. Turn myself sideways like this, pop right out, and there we go. And again, this car is just so stealthy because it's nice. You know, I keep it nice. I, I wash it. I wax it myself. I keep it tuned up. I expect it to go just forever. They're very, very efficient because it uses regenerative braking. Uh, the brakes really don't have to be replaced very often. It uses a continuously variable transmission. So that's really smooth and again, very efficient. Yes, you're paying a premium because it's a hybrid and stuff. But now that we're on to the next generation and stuff, this one, you know, you, you pick up last generation and there's just, there's tons of room. I actually think this I think this is Gen 3, works better than, than the newest ones because there isn't quite so much of a bump when you fold the seats down, um, or seat in this case. So that, that's really sweet. The other consideration that I've been working on is, yes, I have tinted windows, factory tinted in fact, and at night you really can't see in too well, but I wanted to make them even more blocked out just in case someone comes up here. There's not much you can do for the front seat, but you know, I've got Jack up there. And the windshield, you know, if, if I was back there and I had the blanket over my face, I, I really don't think people would notice. But still, if I'm watching the iPad, if I'm using my phone or something like this, and I just don't want people peeking in or getting spooked or something like that. So I've got one other solution. I ordered these special magnetic window covers, custom cut for Toyota Prius from Europe. By the way, I'm gonna have all the links to the different, you know, the uh, computer holder and some of the mattress pad and, and these, uh, these screens in the description. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and show you how they work, because I think they're really cool and it's just another step uh, in my, my little system here. Okay, so I've put the screens on the back half of the car. You can see, just looking in, it's, it's just this pattern, very similar to what some people put for their kids so that their kids aren't getting the sun in their face quite so much. And I've only got it on half here, so you can see clear on this side and then the mesh on this side. And they've, it's, it fits for all of them. They just fit perfectly. I'm super happy about this. And now I did have to order them kind of custom, but even from the inside, look at that. 
clear up front. I have a mesh right there on the small window and at the back. And then these are the other ones right here. And I'll just give the shout out. Nigel Marston Motorsports from the United Kingdom. Thank you very much, buddy. These are, these are sweet and they pack flat so I can lay them under my mattress. And I'm not sure I would even need to use them all the time, but it, it would just act as a, a privacy screen a little bit more. They even have half uh, pieces that fit for part of the driver window just to keep it even more private. You know, one concern that I have had uh, with with Jack the dog is that some people would actually think it's a real dog and call the police or try to break the windows So, you know as real as it looks You get close enough and you're like, oh, maybe that's not a real dog So I hope that that's something that I'm still working on I've heard about people in LA getting like blow-up dolls and putting them in their passenger seat You know to drive in the HOV high occupancy vehicle lanes um, They're not quite there uh, I just think the dog is kind of cool and friendly. And if, I, if I'm ever approached uh, by the law or, you know, something like that, usually I'm parking in places that are legal, it's a friend's house, and I just prefer to, to sleep in my car. Uh, but there's also, you know, there are times where I'm not sleeping, I'm just hanging out, relaxing in my car, using my iPad or something like that. This is a nice way to, to feel some sense of home, some sense of peace when, when you aren't at home or you don't have a home. You know, my, my family lives in Texas, I've got some family in Colorado and Arizona, and I can, I can easily get to them, and I can do it in such a way that I'm not standing out, hopefully. I always drive the speed limit because I have out-of-state plates. These are just all the considerations. Having done this now for several years and just trying to really dial it in and think about all the things that could happen, and, and thankfully, none of them really have. You know, I have AAA. I've got my cell phone. I've got all the safety gear that we talked about before. So it's just a neat setup. I was excited to share, but I wanted to do so after I'd actually lived this way for a while and could chime in on some of those fringe cases. Um, and I hope it helps you. Okay.